Limited's Q3 FY23 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and anyone who wishes to ask a question may enter star and one on the touchtone telephone. To remove yourself from the queue, please enter star and two. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star and zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Krishna Bodhanapur, Managing Director and CEO of Science Limited. Thank you and over to you, Mr. Krishna Bodhanapur. Thank you very much. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Science Limited's earning call for the third quarter of fiscal year 2023. I am Krishna Bodhanapur, Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of Science. Present with me on this call are Mr. Ajay Agarwal, Executive Director and Chief Financial Officer, and Mr. Karthik Natrajan, Executive Director and Chief Operating Officer. I would first like to mention that some of the statements made in today's discussions may be forward-looking in nature and may involve risks and uncertainties. A detailed statement in this regard is available on our investor update, which has been mailed to you and is also posted on our corporate website. This call will be accompanied with an earnings presentation. The details have already been shared with you. As you are aware, Science Limited, Limited's subsidiary, Science DNM Limited, has filed a draft red herring prospectus, PRHP, dated 9th January 2023, with the Securities and Exchange Board of India, BSC, and NSC, in connection to its proposed IPO. As we are in the SEBI mandated quiet period, the management will not be responding to any queries in connection with the proposed IPO of Science DLM Limited on the DLM business and operations. Participants are requested to kindly refer to the draft red herring prospectus dated 9th January 2023 of Science DLM Limited, available on the websites of SEBI, BSC, and NSC, and the merchant bankers to the IPO, Access Capital Limited, and JM Financial Limited for any information in, relative, in relation to Science DLM Limited and the proposed IPO. With this, let me take you through the highlights for the quarter. In Q3, FY23, we posted revenue of US dollars 197 million, which is a year-on-year -year growth of 28.6% in constant currency, 24.8% in US dollars, and quarter-on-quarter -quarter growth of 13.4% in constant currency or 12.7% in US dollars. In rupee terms, our quarterly revenue stands at 1,618 crores, which signifies a growth of 36.7% year-on-year and 15.9% quarter-on-quarter. Services revenue stood at US dollars 157.9 million, which is a year-on-year -year growth of 34.4% in constant currency and quarter-on-quarter -quarter growth of 11.9% in constant currency. Services revenue growth without acquisitions is 10.6% constant currency year-on-year -year and 3.7% uh, constant currency quarter on quarter. Normalized group EBITDA margin, excluding the impact of the exceptional item, stood at 17.2%, which was up 78 bips quarter on quarter and down 79 bips year on year. Normalized group EBIT margin, excluding the impact of the exceptional item, stood at 12.9%, which is up 98 bips quarter on quarter or down 100 bips year on year. Normalized services EBIT is at 13.9%, which is up 147 bips quarter on quarter, and down 169 bips year on year. Normalized fat stood at 1627 million for the quarter, which is a growth of 47.5% quarter on quarter, and 23.5%, sorry, 47.5% uh, 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 year on year, and 23.5% quarter on quarter, which is the highest net profit normalized that we've delivered uh, in our history. Coming to other highlights for the quarter, science reinforces its position as a major contender in Everett's Industry 4.0 Services Peak Matrix Assessment 2022. We are delighted to announce that we have, we have emerged as a major contender in Everett's Group's Industry 4.0 Services Peak Matrix Assessment 2022. Science has reinforced its position in the Industry 4.0 space through investments in creating IP, solutions and technology studios with lab environment and by strengthening capabilities in uh, Internet, of, uh, 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 Internet of Things 
cloud, automation, analytics, etc. Science aims to address its customers' key business challenges by leveraging the right mix of digital capabilities, technologies, solutions, and platforms to accelerate time to value, to time to market, and maximize adoption and experience. With this, I would like to hand over this call to Mr. Rajay Agarwal, who will take you through the detailed financial performance for the quarter. Thank you, and over to you, Ajay. Thank you, Krishna. Uh, I am very delighted, as Krishna said, we have overall very uh, well-rounded performance uh, and a performance that's not only sustainable, but which can further uh, improve. When I say well-rounded, I think it's not only that we are getting traction on the uh, top line. We have excellent uh, performance uh, on the profitability uh, and also uh, on the cash flow. As you have seen, our vision is to be industry-leading uh, earnings uh, growth player and also the uh, to be the best in cash generation. I think this quarter is a very good reflection of that. And I want to assure you that the same will uh, continue. With this, uh, I move, move over to the uh, revenue uh, slide, uh, just to give you uh, a little insight into uh, revenue. Our uh, total uh, revenue is 197 million, as Krishna said. And it's gratifying to see we have about 28.6% growth uh, year on year. And uh, we also have 13.4% uh, quarter on quarter. Uh, if you look only for services, it's 167.9. And uh, uh, if you look at uh, the uh, organic itself, it's close to 4%. I'm talking of all numbers in constant currency. And uh, the uh, inorganic, there is a growth of about 8%. So that totals to about 12% growth on uh, services, which is very nice. And uh, on the uh, organic piece, uh, just want to clarify uh, that one, all the acquisitions have been completely uh, integrated and completely reported for the full period. In this particular quarter, we do have a situation where we are looking at uh, the uh, where we are looking at the uh, three months of CTEC performance as against one month last quarter. But with this, the uh, full run rate revenue of the uh, inorganic. Uh, is coming in, and we are really doing well uh, on the inorganic uh, uh, side, and this momentum will continue. Uh, next, I go to the uh, next slide, uh, uh, which is on the uh, hedge book. Uh, nothing significant. I just want to say that you know we continue to be very prudent, continue to follow the same policy, and that's reflected overall. I think uh, we are accurate on the EPS side. Um, and total coverage is mentioned here, and we still have positive about $2 million if you were to look at uh, next 12 months uh, at the current exchange rates versus our headbook position. I'll move on to the income statement. I think this is where you, you all had a concern that <coughs> the H1, uh, we had uh, taken extraordinary steps uh, to take care of the arrest of attrition and make us very competitive in terms of uh, the uh, people side. Uh, that is over now, and the benefit of volume, the benefit of efficiencies, and no headwind uh, from the wage hike. Uh, what it means is we are really looking at uh, extremely good normalized services a bit margin, what you have been traditionally looking at, that is excluding the acquisitions, excluding DLM, of 15.1%, which is a very handsome increase of almost 2% quarter on uh, uh, quarter. Our utilization, our offshoring, uh, I think the focus on letting go of low quality work, you will find that some of that uh, is the lowest level and there is a huge uh, effort even on the SGA optimization. And uh, we are working on a lot of benchmarking and making sure that you know on each of these areas, whether it is operational efficiencies or our SGA, we, uh, 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 we uh, want to become the industry best. Uh, overall, consolidated margin has been 12.9%, which is uh, both a combination of the acquisitions as well as the DNA. Uh, as Krishna mentioned, uh, as far as acquisitions are concerned, at EBITDA level, uh, we are slightly positive and accurate. All of you have been asking us in the past, we have been accurate. I confirm to you that you know, if we are at about 17-18% uh, EBITDA for services for the acquisitions all four put together, we are positive on that. Uh, it's only that in terms of the D&A, &D, uh, it takes time. Once we scale up, 
we will be able to see uh, the gap also bridged on the EBIT level. So as as of now, uh, for the quarter, it's uh, not accretive at EBIT level, but it's accretive on the EBITDA level. And as I said, once we get the synergies and the focus in the medium term, we will make it uh, accretive at the EBIT level itself. There has been a nice uh, movement on tax. We've been looking at uh, uh, the tax optimization measures. And while you are looking at 24.1, I think we will continue to have some benefit uh, in quarter four as well. Uh, but in steady state, our guidance will be more like 25 to 26% of tax rate. In India, we are already adopting that 20% ordinance um, uh, rate. So all round, I want to uh, uh, assure you that there is a uh, complete focus on profitability. Uh, and we are making choices in our customer decisions, in our revenue decisions, to see that profitability is the first uh, priority. I go over to the uh, next one, uh, which is the uh, pat and a bit uh, walk. Uh, uh, this will explain to you uh, that, you know, uh, I will let you read this. Uh, this clearly says, if you see uh, in terms of uh, the normalized items, our impact has been uh, reducing. It has been much lower, uh, less than a million dollars in this particular quarter, and there is no other one off. I'll let you read this, and if you have any questions, we will uh, uh, take it up uh, separately. On the EBIT bridge, very quickly, um, if you look at the bottom of the table, that tells you the journey between the two quarters. So we have got uh, a good benefit of scale. And once we get back to, you know, three, four, five percent kind of a growth quarter on quarter, definitely it has huge impact on our uh, uh, margin and you can see 149 bips is what we have got and as I said the utilization offshoring some of the things that we are doing on uh, uh, making sure that we uh, pick up the right quality of revenue that's about 150 bips we did have headwinds you know in quarter three the number of days especially at on site are much lower so uh, I can tell you that you know uh, we will sustain this and we'll further improve this uh, in the next quarter with continued traction on the volume side, operational efficiency side, and some of the measures that we are also trying to take to control the SGD. On the cash generation, uh, uh, I think uh, we have got one of the best uh, DSOs uh, for the company, which is at about uh, 76 days, and conversion has been uh, uh, nice. Uh, if you see at a normalized level, if you leave the one-offs, we have generated 1362 million of free cash flow which is almost 50% conversion. And uh, you will see in quarter four, this traction will continue. And we'll further uh, improve the DSO from uh, our current level, both in terms of unveiled revenue. We are winding up many projects uh, in H2 uh, in terms of completion, which are uh, sort of longer gestation by way of their contracts. And also we are trying to bring down our overdues. We are trying to improve the factoring. So you will see that both DSO and free cash flow will further improve. With this, I will... Uh, uh, hand over to Karthik uh, for his uh, uh, commentary, please. Thank you, Ajay. I uh, wish you all a very happy new year. And uh, as Krishna and Ajay talked about, I think we had a, an all-around performance, uh, both on the sales as well as delivery and operational efficiency that have been brought in. And just to put things in the perspective, uh, to start looking at the table on the left side, if you look at aerospace, uh, which has grown quarter on quarter by 4.4% in constant currency. Since the currencies have uh, fluctuated significantly in Q3, we are looking at the constant currency uh, uh, column. And if you look at rail transportation, that's taken a dip of minus 4.9%. We talked about rail recovering in H2, and uh, we are hoping that by Q4, we should probably be getting this in the positive uh, territory. Communication, which has grown by 1.3%, and uh, they have been one of our uh, stars of. Uh, growing at 20% plus year on year. I think that uh, story continues. And as far as mining, energy, and utilities, and we have grown about 6.8%, solid performance across all the segments of mining, energy, and utilities. New growth areas, the growth is led by uh, automotive and uh, semiconductor, and they've grown by 8% uh, quarter on quarter in constant currency, leading to overall services uh, without acquisition, growing at 3.7%. We are able to counter the furloughs uh, less than working days in Q3 with operational efficiency by maximizing on the utilization as well as the offshore mix. The organic offshore mix has gone up by about 180 basis points as compared to Q2. And our uh, initiatives on automation, season cure, 
and uh, price sites continue to uh, help us and uh, we talk about some of things as part of the next steps and including the uh, services and acquisitions put together we have grown about 11.9 percent quarter on quarter at the group level leading to 13.4 percent quarter on quarter if you take at the services level including acquisitions year on year at 34.4 and 28.6 uh, at the group level as far as order intake is concerned, uh, we have seen a significant momentum in Q3 and led by aerospace, communications, automotive, and uh, mining. And uh, we could really see a year on year growth of 18% in our order intake. This is purely for services, organic, and we have not yet integrated the inorganic part of the order intake into our uh, books fully. And as far as uh, this is a constant currency, is more than 32% plus. Uh, uh, year on year growth. I think this is something which is giving us confidence about the demand momentum. We talked about earlier that H2 is likely to be better than H1. We also won about five large deals, and two of them are coming from aerospace, and two from energy and utilities, and one from uh, automotive and mobility, leading to about uh, $60 million worth of total contract potential. So, we have to give a quick color on the business performance outlook. I think the markets. Continue to be dynamic considering the geopolitical high inflation, rising interest rates. I think that the challenges still persist. But however, we are definitely starting to see some green shoots. And uh, if you get really deep dive into each of the segments and aerospace, we expect the commercial aerospace to come back to 2019 levels by H2 of 2023 from various analysts and some of our customers. The revenue passenger mines are expected to probably surpass sometime in 2023 as compared to what was predicted earlier to be in 2024. And also the China zero COVID policy and uh, that being uh, unwounded, I think that should help us to make this momentum that we talked about happen in this year. And also led by some of the initiatives around digitalization, smart factory and sustainability in the aerospace, I think this helps us to continue to make projection of uh, growth. And we have grown about 3.5% quarter on quarter in Q2, and uh, with 4.4% uh, quarter on quarter in Q3, we expect probably close to double digit growth in quarter on quarter for uh, Q4. And rail, which is still in the recovery path, and uh, the growth is led by advanced automation and analytics, and also the rail traffic management systems and uh, the billing systems, I think those are the growth areas that we are seeing as far as rail is concerned. We expect rail to come back uh, to a growth trajectory from Q4 and probably will take another few more quarters for us to hit the trajectory that we were running earlier. Communications, which has been our strong, robust growth engine, I think continuing to make uh, inroads and uh, some of the growth led by 5G, private wireless, as well as uh, on the fiber and uh, especially the time to market uh, improvement and led by smart FTTX, we call it as our offerings, along with some of the digital initiatives to improve cost and customer experience. Also, some of the interesting uh, solutions that we have been able to bring, along with SelfieNet, on the low energy consumption devices and helping to automate the process of energy to be reduced on the operational cost. I think some of them will uh, help us to grow on the communications uh, moving forward. Moving on, mining. Mining is uh, driving the growth based on the decarbonization as well as the energy transition efforts, which is driving the demand for newer minerals, newer uh, materials, including zinc, cobalt, copper, and lithium. I think that uh, growth is likely to be exponential, and uh, we are seeing uh, growth in improving the mining operations to be intelligent, safe, and sustainable. And uh, some of the opportunities we are seeing includes uh, the robotic solutions, safety, the safety of the operations, private safety deployment, and uh, partnering with Selfinet, I think are giving us some interesting synergy opportunities to pursue. Energy and utilities, I think the biggest opportunity we are seeing for the next uh, uh, three to five years is about the clean and sustainable energy and uh, led by hydrogen battery storage and carbon power capture technology investments are likely to see the growth uh, happening as we talked about. We also one, two deals, one of them was improving the supply chain management for uh, carbon sequestration technologies. I think this is an interesting opportunity that we are able to expand with the customers that we have uh, acquired about three years ago. 
new growth areas and automotive continues to be our uh, growth engine and which is uh, essentially driven by software defined vehicles and autonomous systems are essentially driving the growth and electrification hydrogen fuel option and diesel technologies are areas that we are really making investments to see how do we continue this growth trajectory healthcare and life sciences and uh, uh, which is driven by uh, uh, what i would call it as the interoperability and uh, patient centric outcomes connected devices digital platforms are the ones which are seeing uh, growth for us and uh, we have seen some muted uh, performance in q3 we expect this is to be one of the customers which will probably come back to the normalcy in the next uh, one or two quarters high tech and uh, this is one area we are starting to see some green shoots in newer areas of uh, uh, space and uh, aerospace and aerospace and uh, we are uh, definitely looking at how do we leverage our capabilities that we built over the last two decades to be uh, helping us to grow in newer areas and especially on the technology as well as on the satellite and space areas Semiconductors, and uh, this is uh, one area which has done well for us from Q2 to Q3. And however, due to uh, some of the inflationary and consumer demand that is slowing down, there may be some kind of a softness in the next two to three quarters. With that, we talked about some of the technology uh, solutions and programs that we announced almost uh, about 12 to 18 months ago. We are starting to make significant progress. I'm not going to read all the elements of this slide. I'll just pick on two, three. Uh, Key ones, we started working on digital twin for nuclear power plants, and uh, this is an interesting project. And uh, we are trying to build. How do you think we can uh, help the customers to uh, assess the performance and maintenance requirements, and be able to continue to uh, help in improving the productivity and operational efficiency? Similarly, I talked about the enterprise private networks. We've been able to. Uh, uh, help in making the assessment on network requirements and do the network design and be able to roll out for one of the mining customers. That's something which is an interesting area that we have been able to work on. Autonomous industrial systems and uh, interesting project to work on off highway customer. And uh, how do you think you can bring autonomous operations of uh, passenger cars into uh, off highway road segments? And this is about. Uh, vision systems getting integrated with analytics and how the operator will be able to maneuver the vehicle when they are not able to see some of the things in front of them. So with that, I will uh, hand over back to Krishna for providing the outcome for us uh, moving forward. Thank you, Ajay and Karthik, for the details. So if I may summarize the output, um, I first want or uh, the outlook, sorry. I first want to say we see we continue to see very good momentum in our organic business and our support organic revenue in constant currency will be higher than Q3. Uh, like I said, you know, this is backed up with some very strong momentum, order book, order intake, etc. This will be driven by growth in aerospace, mining, communications, and automotive. Having said that, and like Karthik also uh, provided a brief, there's other areas also um, where we see further um, uh, tailwinds that are possible, including uh, rail and so on and so forth. So overall, we're confident that Q4 will see further acceleration in growth. On top of that, we'll add uh, 40 to 15 percent in uh, FY23 revenue due to acquisitions in constant currency. We expect the FY23 normalized margins for the organic services business to be in the 30 to 14 percent range for the group, um, and we're, we're we're quite confident that we will be well in that range um, and towards the higher end of that range. We expect FY23 normalized EBITDA to be in the 16 to 17 percent, and again, we're quite confident we'll be at the higher end of that range. Uh, the Q4 normalized EPS will be in the 15 to 16 uh, rupee uh, range compared to the 14.9, uh, which is what we did in uh, Q3. Uh, the uh, effective tax rate will be around 26 percent, um, also because we've done some optimization and, and have some benefits. Free cash flow will be in line uh, on a normalized basis. As you could see, uh, Q3 cash flow, uh, cash generation is also back to where we used to be, and we will continue that. Uh, just to uh, uh, reiterate what we said uh, last time, again, um, I'll also say this is what we believe is the uh, base case scenario. We have not done our budgets, et cetera, obviously, but we'll re we will reiterate that in FY24, we have a billion dollar um, visibility or run rate visibility. And uh, the EPS next year will at least be uh, 60 rupees. Again, I want to just reiterate this because we talked about it last time, and I just want to say we're very confident. Having said that, we haven't done enough um, work on it to give a more 
a substantial number, but this is the minimum case that we believe that we will uh, achieve for next year. With that, once again, thank you very much for your support, and uh, I will hand it back to the moderator for any uh, questions uh, that you may have. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Sandeep Shah from Equira Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity and congrats on a good execution. Uh, just uh, wanted to, in terms of the guidance, we earlier used to guide on organic basis 13 to 15% growth uh, in the group revenue in CC terms. This time there is no mention for the same. So any change in that outlook? Uh, so Sandeep, uh, we're looking at uh, the trade-offs because we have, like I said, we definitely have acceleration in uh, uh, Q4 uh, in terms of revenue. So we're also using this as an opportunity to look at uh, what are the areas uh, that, uh, or what are some of the things that we can also defocus on because we also want to use this opportunity to continue to focus and build on margins. So if you look at it, for example, this quarter, in spite of the uh, almost 4% growth that we had, we our subcontracting work has come down to less than, or to about 2% is the number in subcontracting. And if you remember at a peak that used to be 6 7%, obviously that's not the quality of them new. We want it, so therefore we've disengaged. So we're also looking at Q4 as an opportunity to do that. So that's why um, you know we, we didn't put that. But uh, what I'll say is we will be close to that, I'd say, 30% number, just realistically. Uh, but we're just seeing what is the right trade-off uh, because uh, there's also an opportunity to just strengthen some of the margin-related uh, levers because we are seeing some very good growth, which gives us the opportunity to make some choices. But we will be in that in that ballpark uh, when we make these trade-offs. Okay, okay. And uh, uh, Karthik has just commented that uh, in the fourth quarter, aerospace within services may show a double-digit growth on a Q on Q basis. So, uh, will it be just in services or at a console level? And what will drive this growth? Uh, what has been accelerating the growth in aerospace? I think, as I said, thanks, uh, Sandeep Karthik here. And uh, I think, as we guided, uh, we are definitely seeing potential momentum building up. And uh, some of the large OEMs that we have been working for uh, many uh, years are starting to spend money on. I think that's definitely an interesting sign. And China coming out of the zero COVID policy, probably they would see about 2 million people traveling in the next 45 days or so. I think this is probably something which is never seen in the last uh, two and a half years or so. So which is definitely a great positive momentum for us. And uh, the third thing was uh, some of our uh, large customers and are likely to see a growth of uh, teams for 2023, especially on the new uh, engine or new aircraft sales, combined with uh, the operating hours increasing and uh, increase in terms of their MRO spend. Okay, okay. So this outlook is only for services business, right? Yes. For the aerospace. Yeah. yeah, whatever I covered, we are not talking anything about DLM in the call today. Okay. And with many uh, diversification through MNAs in the Europe as a whole, uh, are we witnessing any amount of client decision making slowdown in some of the acquisitions which we have done uh, because of the macro pressure, supply chain pressure, gas shortage in the Europe as a whole? I would say I think as far as the new energy uh, transition or energy transition is concerned, we are very bullish on uh, medium to long term. And uh, we are seeing uh, some of the newer areas. There was one customer who partnered with us in winning a carbon capture solution for a uh, very large customer of theirs. And uh, this is kind of indicating that the momentum is definitely getting built. The energy transition is a global phenomenon. It is just not about Europe, and it's happening across Asia, Pacific, India, and North America. So we are continuing to be bullish on the energy transition for the medium to long term. So, so, and the last bookkeeping question, if I can ask, uh, Ajay sir, uh, whether this legal and uh, charges for the legal suit which is going will continue in the fourth quarter as well? 
came stable, continued in fourth quarter, uh, and uh, as we had mentioned, uh, the outcomes and the process of this is uh, really a little bit medium term and long term. So it will continue for some time. But we keep on updating uh, as we get better insights into it. So yes, it will be there in quarter four also. Okay, but quarter four could be the last quarter, or it can continue beyond that. No, I think it could continue beyond that. Uh, uh, it will take uh, uh, some time uh, to get settled. We don't know precisely, but uh, it is a question of uh, many more quarters, not one quarter. And cash balances are down. So, is there a debt repayment in this quarter? Uh, I think for the acquisition, it is just a timing issue between quarter two and quarter three. We had uh, taken some uh, uh, sort of, you know, uh, loan to fund the uh, acquisitions, and subsequently it was uh, reduced by infusing the equity into the subsidiary. Just a point of time thing. So we have funded the acquisitions on uh, one part by our own cash, which is equity, and one part by debt. I think the uh, debt part got done in the quarter two, and the equity infusion happened in uh, quarter three. Because of that, uh, you are seeing that uh, uh, swing. Uh, this cash is reduced because of the usage in the acquisitions that we did uh, in this year. Okay. Thanks and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mehir Manohar from Carnelian Asset Management. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Thanks for giving the opportunity. And uh, first of all, congratulations on a great set of numbers. I mean, these are really good numbers in the challenging environment. Uh, I specifically wanted to ask something on the order intake. I mean, you know, we are having a good order inflow, uh, roughly two forty million dollars on the services side. So, sir, you know, what is driving this order inflow? Uh, which are the areas? Uh, what kind of service are we winning? And also on the commentary, I mean, in your opening remarks, I mean, uh, Krishna, you mentioned that pipeline is of one point five x in the presentation. Uh, so, just wanted to get more color and you know, which geography, which areas are leading to this uh, pipeline, and how do we see pipeline transitioning into uh, order intake? Uh, yeah, so that was my first question. My second question was on the, uh, you know, the captive deal that we won in first quarter, uh, that captive deal and plus the Honeywell order. Uh, so, I mean, what could be the revenue contribution from both of these deals uh, and from where, uh, from which period uh, could they start contributing to the revenue? Uh, yeah, so those were the questions. Okay, on the first question, uh, Mehind, uh, I think as you know, the flow of all the sales cycle happens. The pipeline gets built, it gets converted into order intake and then to revenue. And what we are seeing, the kind of deals that we are participating now, uh, we started bringing focus on the five pillars that we have been talking about, whether it is about digital embedded uh, software, semiconductors, and uh, geospatial and networks. I think we are seeing momentum getting built up across all the service lines. And we also talked about some of the high growth segments, whether it is automotive, uh, healthcare, mining, communications and aerospace joining these parties. I think we are seeing growth uh, across all the vertical segments. And that's where we are seeing the, the order intake growth that we have talked about to the tune of 18.2% in dollar term or 22% plus on constant currency. And sorry, I didn't get you a second question. Where is the order intake from which industries? That's what I talked about. We had second question to follow up yeah, yes, I mean, so uh, on the uh, deal feature, there's the uh, Honeywell deal on the DLM side, and the boss deal, I mean, the uh, uh, captive deal which is there, which is one of the first quarter. Uh, so, what could be the revenue contribution from both these deals? Yeah, I think uh, we are not talking about any specific clients, uh, Mehit, but uh, as we talked about uh, even during our industry day, we are doubling our automotive business compared to last year. I think that trajectory is still in that. Sure, sure. Yeah, that's it for my side. Thank you very much, and congratulations on the great numbers. Thank you. Yeah. Participants who wishes to ask a question may press star and one. The next question is from the line of Shraddha from Asian Market Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Congratulations on a good quarter. Uh, am I audible? Yes, sir, you are. Thank you. Yeah, so congrats uh, on a good quarter. Uh, two key questions are, uh, can you just uh, tell us what has been the organic services growth uh, in 9 months, 23 so far? It's sort of organic services growth is? In 9 months. In 9 months. I guess uh, 9 months and 9 months. 
Yeah, I think uh, should be about 11% to 11, around 11% constant currency. Yeah. Okay, okay. And so, uh, the other question is, why are we guiding to flat ETFs in 4Q despite the fact that Karthik mentioned that uh, even Aero can go double digit and ETFs of 15 at the lower end would mean flat ETFs on a Q1C basis. So are we hinting at a margin uh, decline uh, so far, you know, if you say in 4Q? No, no uh, let me uh, clarify that. Uh, I'll say see, we never guided on EPS. We just did it last quarter for the first time because there was a lot of acquisitions and uh, you know there was a lot of various things that were going on in the business which didn't reflect a very good uh, or a very uh, or which didn't reflect the ground reality and that's why we guided for EPS for next year. I just wanted to say that we are at least holding on to that. Um, you know, we, we will. I mean, logically, we will do better than that. But again, I don't want to get into next year because we we haven't done enough work. But I'd say logically, we'll get better than that, and that's why I said at least 60. But at this point, I, I don't think it would be prudent to get into too much more um, uh, uh, in 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 that. On Q4, also, um, you know, again, I think. Uh, we will be at least at the higher end of that range, uh, given that we are just 16 for 14.9. We also see a man, uh, margin expansion in uh, Q4. So we'll just be in the higher, higher end of that range for sure, but we're just being prudent with various things that are going on right now. Also, the other thing I will say is uh, we, will, um, um, uh, we, we will have some one-off costs because uh, we are going to, we've taken a number of actions uh, in terms of making sure that we uh, uh, take a, uh, we set ourselves up for a good uh, FY24, uh, right? So there's some actions that we need to take in terms of giving up space, in terms of breaking some of the or renegotiating some of the contracts. There'll also be some costs that is associated with it, and uh, I think we're anticipating some of that cost, which will, which is what will depress margin a little bit. But I, I'll say you know we're quite confident, at least from. Both of, definitely from a gross margin perspective, we're very confident that it will hold. Um, from uh, EPIC also, we're confident that there will be expansion. It's just that we want to be prudent given that we also want to take some aggressive decisions on cost that will pay off in FY24. Renegotiating some client contracts is what you mean? No, not client contracts. Uh, vendor contracts like hardware, software, uh, space, and so on and so forth. Got it. And sir, so just uh, any outlook on how SciTech has been uh, stacking up? Or it's been one full quarter of consolidation now. So any outlook you would want to give on SciTech? It's too early to call out Shraddha, but I think so far it is on track. It is progressing well. And uh, the kind of opportunities we are seeing definitely makes us to be excited about what we can offer in the next 12, 18 months. And we are trying to synergize our go-to-market and by integrating the same teams together. I think that process would happen sometime this quarter, and uh, we would probably have a better view by the time we complete, uh, we conclude this quarter. And if I may just add to that, I think uh, uh, we're also winning some good new deals uh, through SciTech and because of the uh, combined entity and the synergy. In fact, there's one on which the customer made a press release. Uh, the customer is the Acre, the uh, FPSO company, but customer made a press release citing Cytex uh, capability as one of the key reasons why they're going to undertake this project. And the two companies that they mentioned are CTEC and uh, ABB as their uh, partners in executing the project. And this is all something that the customer made. We did not do uh, any of the press release. Right. And just one last question, if I can. Kartik, I think last quarter you had indicated that Aero for this year should grow, uh, you know, 9 to 10 percent. This uh, quarter itself, we are at a run rate of 8 to 9 percent in constant currency on a YOY basis. And given the fact that we are talking of double digit Q on Q, I think we are implying a double digit YOY growth also in 4Q in Aero. So what has changed from Aero's perspective in just one quarter? Is there some uh, single client? Uh, budget that has moved up significantly, or is it across the clients that we're seeing better traction compared to what was anticipated at the end of last quarter? Yeah, I think good observations, uh, Shraddha. I think we expect the uh, growth for air and air to be in teams, and that's definitely uh, given based on where we stand today and what we are looking at for Q4. I think what we are also seeing that is this is slightly broad based. I think the decline has stopped. That's what we've been talking about. If you look at last four or five quarters, we've been successively growing quarter on quarter in aerospace. So we have not seen a dip. And uh, we also talked about uh, 
few of our large customers are continuing to grow, which is getting broad-based. I think that's what I would really say that gives us confidence for uh, seeing the momentum in the aerospace segment. Good to hear that, Karthik. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, you may press star and one. Participants who wishes to ask a question may press star and one. The next question is from the nine of Samir Dosani from ICAC Prudential Asset Management. Please go ahead. Uh, hi team, congratulations on a good set of numbers. Best wishes to all uh, at your at your end. Just one clarification, slide number 17, you know, science services, you have, you have mentioned that 240 million is the order intake. And, and uh, you mentioned that the five large deals have a total contract opportunity of 60 million. So what is this uh, difference? I, if you can just clarify that. Thanks. So the order intake is the purchase orders we received during the quarter, and uh, which goes into our uh, SAP system. And that okay. means confirm purchase orders from customers. The contract okay. potential is something that the customer signs up with us about, uh, say, $10 million, and uh, depending on some of the large segments, and $5 million on smaller segments. We consider anything which is more than $5 million for smaller segments and $10 million for larger segments as part of uh, total contract potential. And that is six, uh, $60 million from five deals that we are announcing here. Because there is a good Q and Q growth, and uh, so just to want to understand the incremental part is is, is slightly longer than 12 months or uh, a longer project, or is it like uh, you know you will see that in less than 12 months or so? I think we always looked at year on year because of the seasonality. Some customers okay. would tend to issue the purchase order by Q3, some would do it in Q4. But I think this is close to the second highest order intake that we ever had on services business. So to that extent, it's definitely a high, and uh, you will always look at this more than a QOQ number. Look at this as a YOI right now. Understood, understood. And uh, second point, uh, question is about the communications part. I think uh, uh, after a robust uh, uh, you know, growth in Q1, Q2, I think now the growth is uh, uh, slightly lower. So is there some contract that would have ended, or, or if you can just comment on that, is there a pickup that you can expect on a sequential basis in communication? Thanks. Yeah, I think there are about a dozen customers that we work with where uh, they may keep changing some priorities for this quarter to the next quarter because all of these businesses are driven by time to market and their ability to gain uh, market share and revenue for the customers. So there could be some change that would happen in any of the quarters. If you look at from Q4 to Q1, we have grown double digit in comms and uh, which is sustained and continued to grow on top of that. So that's essentially what is happening. We see that the momentum in communication continues and uh, we are definitely bullish on the segment. Okay, okay. Lastly, my question is around utilization. So utilization, now we are at, I think, 90% uh, uh, as per your presentation. So is that something which is sustainable? Uh, uh, what's my question? Thanks. Yeah, I would say I think uh, we would always uh, like to expand uh, in terms of our uh, bench, and I think that is going to be some initiative that will be taken as part of what we want to do in Q4. And our intent is to maximize uh, the utilization as far as uh, the Q3 is concerned, where there were lesser working days and the furlough effect. I think that is essentially what it has shown. And it is good to see that most of the bench that we carry, and uh, they are relevant bench, I think that's something which is definitely uh, seen based on what we have looked at on the operational efficiency. Understood, understood. And lastly, when you say Q and Q uh, double digit growth in aerospace, is, is, that some, is the growth rate that is, uh, you are speaking about is sustainable? Because, you know, we are already uh, much lower what uh, in this in this vertical versus what we did in, uh, you know, pre-COVID. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Yeah, we have not done the planning for fiscal 24 yet. Maybe by the time we conclude this quarter and the next quarter results, we'll talk about uh, our view for the next uh, financial year. Sure, sure. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks, thanks, team. Uh, best wishes. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Atreya Ramakumar from ITOR PMS. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, good morning team. Uh, sorry, good afternoon, good evening, and uh, you know, congrats on the uh, performance. So I think most of my questions are answered, but uh, I just had one, you know, maybe a medium term question. So I think we have been talking about, you know, benchmarking our uh, bottom line or the profitability with our peers. 
so i just wanted to know you know what uh, maybe on a three three year perspective what are you know medium term aspiration is on the top line and uh, how, whether you know we are going to focus on reducing you know the volatility in the numbers i think that has been an issue in the past as well so sure, say uh, two things on that on on the top line i think uh, you know we we we've, we've uh, sort of talked about what our aspiration is or what our goal is in terms of getting to the billion dollar run rate in the next fiscal year i would leave it at that because we haven't done a much longer term uh, uh, plan against that now in terms of uh, the uh, uh, bottom line uh, we've done a lot of work because as you said you know there is a gap to our uh, peers and we've started to take a lot of actions to identify where some of our inefficiencies have been and we started to take a lot of actions around those uh, inefficiencies so uh, what i would say is uh, and also if you um, uh, if you look at it when i talked about the uh, uh, q um, uh, uh, you know some some one offs in uh, q4 potentially affecting margin a little bit that's also because you know to achieve uh, some of the longer term goals we will have to take some some renegotiating contracts etc which will have a cost in the short term So I would say within by the end of next year we will next financial year that is we will get to the uh, at least the uh, average of our uh, of our peers and I think that will be a good starting point for them to then reflect back and say what more is left in the business but the actions that we have start that we have identified and started to take I think there's a line of sight to get towards at least the uh, average of our peers by the end of the year. So sure. Uh, thank you. yeah thank you and maybe if i could just ask one more question on uh, i think uh, i th- i guess based on the acquisition the onshore uh, you know ratio has gone up so is that uh, is, is this going to be the new normal or is there potential you know for improving uh, on this number as well so it's too early to comment on it after i'm planning by the time we uh, have a better visibility over the next one to two quarters we'll keep you updated about it and uh, i think as you would have seen We have uh, improved our offshoring by one percent every quarter for at least last uh, 10 to 11 quarters. So I think our intent is definitely there as part of what uh, we want to do in the business. Sure. Thank you so much and uh, congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Saurabh Sandhani from Sahasra Capital. Please go ahead. Yes. Hi. Uh, so this is the first time I'm looking at Sahyan. Uh, I just wanted to understand uh, what are what are our capabilities uh, in the aerospace vertical. What, what kind of work do we do in that? Uh, so, sorry, if I may ask, uh, I think it'd be good to have a. If you could reach out to Mayur to we'll set up a more detailed conversation because it will take a bit of time to explain uh, what exactly we do. So, could I suggest uh, that uh, you reach out to Mayur and uh, he will yeah. set up a conversation with us? Sure, 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 sure. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this was the last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Krishna Bhutanapu for closing comments. Thank you very much. I'll just say that uh, thank you for the support and uh, thank you for uh, hearing us out today. Um, obviously, uh, things are looking quite good. Um, the uh, the vertical that was a bit of a lag for us, which was aerospace, which at one point was the largest vertical, and today is the second largest. Uh, aerospace is back, and aerospace is is back with a uh, with a vengeance, I would say. Uh, like Karthik talked about, uh, we have a double digit growth, and while uh, we we you know is is a double digit growth every quarter on quarter sustainable? Probably not. But uh, it's not that uh, the business will degrow. It's it's that the growth that we're seeing is sustainable for a long time. We just need to see how much will it be. Is it be 10% or 5% or what that number is, quarter on quarter? We still need to understand. But having said that, we have a we we find ourselves in a in a good spot. Uh, where you know aerospace, which was a bit of a challenge for us, has now become our strength, and therefore, with the rest of the business also doing quite well, and and with a with a great deal of compliments to the team, especially led by Karthik, on investing in the right areas, be it embedded or digital, what we call five pillars. I think the the potential for us is significant because uh, much of the order intake, and more importantly, the pipeline that's building up, is also in the areas that. Um, 
uh, in, in these areas, these areas which are quite sustainable and what our customers want for a long time. So therefore, you know, I just say thank you very much for the support as we talked about last quarter. Things have come back on track this quarter and we believe that it's only going to accelerate from here. So thank you for the support and we will be in touch. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Science Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines. Good. No questions, lesser questions is good or bad?